Last. Yeah. So, um, guys, there are a number of ways. There are different ways. There is, for example, you say there is a host of different issues, or there are a host of different issues. There are. Yeah. A host of different issues that we're dealing with. There are a number of ways by which you can do something, right? What else comes to your mind? Nelly, you can also participate. So we have a variety of ways. There are numerous issues, numerous ways. Because when you write, you want to say these things, but you need to have different ways of saying them, right? You can't always say there are a lot of ways, or they're different. You can say instead of saying there are different ways to do it, there are a variety of ways. You can use, there are a host of issues, different issues, a host of different issues. But if I say a variety of different ways, I can say it and people say it, but it is, I gave you the word, redundant. What is redundant? Yeah, like for example, I say he he add, he said, and then I want to say he added. But if I say he also added, um, it's people say it all the time. But when you add something, is you also say something, right? So also added would be redundant. Um, so we do have, re but in IELTS or different exams, the examiners are very careful about redundancy. Um, they don't like it usually. So, we have a host of different issues. And a host of is a good one. What about plentiful? Uh, yes. Plentiful. Uh, plentiful is a good, good one. It's just that uh, but pl and plentiful would mean what? So, a ranger? Ranger? Yes. So, um, okay. So, there, uh, if we say on numerous occasions, which is a good one, on numerous occasions, on numerous occasions. So, first of all, numerous is a good word to use for many. We use the word many. We use the word many a lot in our writing. But numerous is more formal and is a better word than many. So many is more formal than a lot of. Because a lot of is less formal. Many is more formal than a lot of. Numerous would be... Uh, if I say, instead of saying a number of times, I told you a number of times. We have also a multitude of times, right? Multitude. Multitude. Multitude would mean just that as well. So, I'm trying to, I'm going to read uh, just now some examples for you. A whole host of people or things, a large number of people or things, a whole stuff show business celebrities have pledged their support. So, a whole stuff, right? So when we go to maybe the word, uh, let's say numerous, the problems of are numerous and Demanding, numerous and difficult to deal with. So, I want you to remember the word numerous. On numerous occasions, I told her on numerous occasions. I warned him on numerous occasions. On numerous occasions would simply mean many times.
on numerous occasions would simply mean many times. I told her on numerous occasions. I told her many times. So on numerous occasions would mean many times. Okay. A variety of different ways, a variety of different issues. Numerous issues. A plethora of a plethora of we also have, instead of saying many, something else that we can say, and no one has said it yet. A large number of, right? So when we say a plethora of, it's actually a large number of. So a plethora of suggestions, suggestions. A plethora of suggestions have been made. A large number of suggestions have been made. But we don't use plethora for a plethora of people came. Like a large number of people came. Mm -hmm. Remember that. That's the words. That's why I want to tell you uh, when you use bigger words, it doesn't mean you can use them for many different occasions. So the bigger the word, the narrower its applicability. The narrower its application. Application is when you apply a word. You say this word, is it applicable in this or applicable in this context or not? The bigger the word, the narrower its applicability or applicability. It's harder to apply that word. For example, if I say a large number, I can use a large number for anything. So it's good. Instead of saying many, in, when we write, and especially when we're writing fast, these, these phrases come in very handy. You know, come in handy? That's an expression. To come in handy. What does it mean when something comes in handy? To come in handy. I would say these expressions come in really handy when you uh, when you're writing. Practical. They come in. They they're very handy. When something is handy, you say this is uh, very handy. It's very easy to use, and it's good to. If if I say keep something handy, it means keep something on hand. That's different. To, so to keep. Keep it on hand or in handy. It means close to yourself and available to yourself. I always keep a, a Swiss Army knife on hand because it's very handy. You know, have you seen Swiss Army knives? No. You know, you know what they're like. They're very handy, like this. So they have so many different things. Like if I want to, at some point, need a screwdriver, I already have it. If I need a, a pair of scissors, I have it right here. Just in case I need to pick my tooth, <laughs> I have it. Or maybe I want to see something very nice from afar and, mmm, nice. <laughs> this would not be the binoculars, but yeah, and so many other things, right? So this is very handy. It's very handy. And I keep it on hand, or I keep it handy, because it's very handy. So these phrases would come in handy, really handy when you're writing. Because when you write, you say, OK, many once, many twice. A lot of is not formal. So you need more formal options, right? Formal options would be a large number. Um, would be many, would be numerous, would be um, in, sometimes if it's we can use a plethora of suggestions have been made, a plethora of ideas 
are being discussed. And you remember, we will talk about format and style, because in writing, format and style is they're very important, especially register, which is the language that you use for writing. And I keep using this word register. This is speaking, basically. But also when you speak, and you speak in formal locations like an interview, it's kind of close to writing. So in an interview, the level of speech, or the register, which is the level of speech, the level of speech, which is basically formal or informal, formal, informal, and in between we have something, what do we call it in between? Semi-formal. So we have formal, informal, and semi-formal. Semi-formal, semi is always in between. Formal, informal, semi-formal. Hmm. Thank you. But that's not the thing I was waiting for. Formal, informal, semi-formal. Uh, and in terms of register, if somebody talks about register in speaking or writing, it's how formal or informal your tone is. Also, we have the tone. So, especially when you're writing or when you're speaking in a formal situation, you don't keep saying there are a lot of, there are a lot of. There's a, a large number of, a large number of students a large number of cars, a large number of uh, applicants, many, now when I say on numerous occasions, what was it? Many times. I have seen that myself on numerous occasions. Darby would ever, he would ask you, uh, was there ever any, can you give me an example of a time when that happened? You say, this happened on numerous occasions, it means many times. We're done with this. Of course, we will have more of quantifiers and qualifiers and intensifiers, mm -hmm. the ones that we need for speaking and writing, but good for now. We're good.